Everyone, welcome back to the Rule Your Pool podcast. I'm your host, Eric Knight with Arenda. This is episode 20, finishing our four-part series on different types of chlorine. Today, we're talking about stabilized chlorines, trichlor, and dichlor. Let's get into it. Episode 20. Here we go. Welcome to Rule Your Pool, the podcast by Arenda that explains and simplifies pool chemistry so that anybody, regardless of experience, can understand it. I'm your host, Eric Knight, bringing clarity to these subjects so that you can bring clarity to your water. If you're ready to rule your pool, then let's go. This is going to be a shorter episode. It's a much more simple episode. And you may notice my co-host, Jared, is not with me. Well, we did record this with Jared, but then, uh, you know, we're not the most technically savvy people and we lost the recording. So I'm going to get to do this again. You get the benefits of me already saying this several weeks ago, and now I get to re-record it. And uh, it's not going to be perfect, but, you know, it's our podcast. So judge away. All right. So what we're going to focus on here is trichlor and dichlor. These are the stabilized chlorines. And the name stabilized refers to two different things. Of course, uh, the main reason they're called stabilized is because these chlorines contain cyanuric acid. In fact, as you buy them by weight, about 50 to 55% of this material that you buy, trichlor or dichlor, is actually cyanuric acid. So it's chlorine that's already bound to CYA. This means it's stabilized against degradation from the sun. That's the main use of the term stabilized. The other thing is stabilized in terms of storage and handling. These are safer chlorines to handle. They're not nearly as volatile as, say, CalHypo. But disclosure here, they still do not play nice with any other types of chlorine. So trichlor and liquid chlorine can still cause a fire. Same with CalHypo and trichlor and any other type of chlorine. So as we say at the end of each of these episodes, do not mix different types of chlorines. It is very, very dangerous. That is a big mistake. Do not do that. All right. So um, there's a few takeaways I want to talk about. I want to talk about what these chlorines actually do and then how to actually treat the pool if your primary chlorine is trichlor. But before I do, trichlor was never designed to be a primary chlorine. Though not originally, anyway. It became one because of economic reasons and ease of use. So you can fit a lot more trichlor on a service truck and you can store it at your house safely. It's not nearly as heavy. It's not nearly as bulky as liquid chlorine. And, you know, it's pretty safe to hold in a bucket for a long time. And so it became a primary chlorine because it was cheap, it was accessible, it was easy to use, and you could store so much more of it in your truck. We get that. But the problem with trichlor, the main problem, is overstabilization. Now, we have done previous episodes, I don't remember which number episode, but we have done previous episodes about the dangers of high cyanuric acid. It slows down chlorine. It slows down chlorine's ability to kill and oxidize, It's a bad thing. And too much CYA will also bring down your LSI balance. It will make your water more aggressive. So that's also a problem. So trichlor as a supplemental chlorine, like it was designed to be, is not necessarily a bad thing. But right now, it's 2021, and there's a major trichlor shortage going on in the industry. So it's not nearly as affordable as it used to be. And even if you're willing to pay the extra money... Good luck getting it. It's very hard to come by. So, you know, factories are just stamping this stuff out on 24-hour shifts, and it's not coming close to the demand that the pool business has traditionally had for trichlor. So we have to be thinking differently about how to chlorinate these pools. So what is trichlor? Well, trichlor is typically coming in three-inch tabs, like a hockey puck kind of thing. And each tab is eight ounces, so two tabs is one pound. By weight... 55% of that tab is cyanuric acid, I guess, depending on the purity, 50 to 55%, something like that. And um, the rest of it's chlorine. And there's some other byproducts in there. But basically, it's, if you want to simple it down, half of it's cyanuric acid, and the other, the smaller half is chlorine. So when you introduce it to the pool, you actually introduce isocyanurate, or chlorine bound to CYA. There's a few things that you need to know about this. Number one, the pH does not control the strength of this chlorine because it's already bound to CYA. The cyanuric acid and free chlorine ratio is what determines the strength and efficacy of this chlorine. Same with dichlor. Trichlor, if you look at a a cyanuric acid molecule, it's like a hexagon. It's got three nitrogen bonds. 
you'll have three chlorines on this CYA, hence trichlor. That's at the molecular level, if you can visualize it in your mind. Dichlor, as you can imagine, has two chlorines on that cyanuric acid. And the differences between them, well, there, there's a few differences, but the key one is trichlor is slow dissolving, very, very common for a primary chlorine, unfortunately. And uh, it comes in pressed tabs, sticks, or little briquettes. Dichlor usually doesn't. Dichlor is typically used as a granular shock. It is not used as a primary chlorine, at least we have not seen that. Um, it is a, it's a very effective shock, but uh, like when we do the green pool cleanup at Arenda, we say non-stabilized chlorine. The reason for that is we want the fastest killing speed possible. Why would you just introduce stabilized chlorine for that purpose if you're trying to kill algae immediately? But it will kill algae. I mean, this is chlorine for sure. It's just a little bit slower than non-stabilized, like granular cal hypo. That being said, there are some advantages to using dichlor over trichlor. Number one, trichlor is a very acidic chlorine, 2.8 pH, 2.8 to 3, I guess, again, depending on the purity. Dichlor is pretty much neutral. It's like 6.5 to 7 pH. So it doesn't change your pH when you introduce it to the water. And that can be a big advantage, especially if you're hyperchlorinating. Uh, if you're going to use dichlor, you're not going to have that pH swing, which is nice. Trichlor, however, will bring down your pH and alkalinity over time, and you should not ever put either one into a skimmer, but especially not trichlor. Trichlor has a very low pH, and 2.8 pH, I believe, is about 10,000 to 12,000 times more acidic than neutral water. That's a remarkably acidic chlorine. It is very important that you not put that directly in the skimmer. So if you're one of the many homeowners who listen to this podcast, by the way, thank you for being here. Do not put these pucks into your skimmer unless you want to buy new equipment in a few short years. It will destroy whatever's in your circulation system that is available to be corroded or degraded. We see it all the time. Now, the most important thing to think about both of these, because by weight, it's about half CYA and the smaller half is chlorine, you are going to be rapidly introducing more cyanuric acid to your pool, which accumulates over time. So one pound of trichlor, again, depending on purity, so I'm speaking generally here, one pound is two three-inch tabs. In 10,000 gallons of water, one pound of trichlor will raise your cyanuric acid somewhere between six and six and a half parts per million. That adds up quick. So if you're putting in four tabs in your 10,000 gallon pool every week, which is a, a very common dose, divide that up and every two tabs is six to six and a half. So you're talking about 12 to 13 parts per million a week. Now we recommend staying between 30 and 50 parts per million of CYA total. Well, that, that means you have basically a month of doing that before you become overstabilized. And overstabilization, as we said before, is a much bigger problem. It dramatically impacts your chlorine's efficacy and speed, but it also lowers the LSI of your water. It makes it more aggressive. I've been to countless pools, and I know we get a lot of calls into the help desk here at Arenda that whether it's a homeowner or a service company, oh, I've got algae. I just can't get rid of algae. Or my water's just cloudy. I cannot figure out how to fix it. Usually the first question we ask is, how high is your cyanuric acid? What, you know, what's your CYA? I don't know. Or they'll say something like, probably too high. Or it's around 100. Well, if you're doing a drop test, for instance, and it's a turbidity test, if, you, if you're higher than 100, you don't know what that number is unless you dilute. Very few people take the time to dilute. But I will tell you right now, if you're even in that conversation, you need to dilute that water anyway because you don't get any extra sunlight benefit having over 70 parts per million cyanuric acid. You just continue to detriment and slow down your chlorine. Now, that might be by design. Maybe you want more CYA in your pool so that you can extend the life of chlorine so you have it one week later. But if you're gonna do that, you probably wanna make sure you're removing phosphates too. So I'm just saying there is a better way to do this. Trichlor is a primary chlorine. The problem with it is it builds up cyanuric acid way too fast. 
And cyanuric acid is hard to get rid of uh, chemically. I mean, there are some products that have mixed results. Really, the only way is to drain and dilute right now. Um, I wish we had something that removes CYA. That'd be great. But draining and diluting is the best way to get it out. It's definitely the most reliable way. But even if you were to drain your pool completely, if you had really high CYA, we've seen cases where CYA actually absorbs into the plaster. You can drain a pool completely and then fill it back up and you already have like 60 or 70 parts per million cyanuric acid. It's nuts, but it happens. We don't know the exact chemistry of why, but CYA, you got to drain and dilute it, keep it at reasonable levels. That would be great. Now, the byproduct of trichlor is a lowering pH, or I should say a suppressed pH. Now, we made mention in previous episodes that the pH naturally wants to rise because of the loss of carbon dioxide, thanks to Henry's law. But an acidic chlorine like trichlor is going to suppress that. It's also going to bring alkalinity down gradually. It's not going to tank your alkalinity, but it will bring it down every time you add more of this chlorine. That needs to be taken into account. So if you're going to manage your water with a trichlor primary chlorine, you need to keep in mind that you actually need more alkalinity in this pool. Now, you might be thinking, more alkalinity? Well, I just spent the last three episodes talking about salt, liquid, and calhypo where you want lower alkalinity. Yeah, I did say more alkalinity because again, we have to stay focused on the LSI. If you have a chlorine now that's acidic and is bringing down your alkalinity and it's bringing down your pH, more alkalinity is to your advantage. It, I'm not saying you need to go crazy, but you probably want 100 to 120 if you are using trichlor on a regular basis. That said, you need to pick your calcium hardness to allow you to stay LSI balanced when whatever your water temperature is when you're doing this. So it is a bit of a change compared to the non-stabilized chlorines, which have a net rise in pH, even though it's slow. Trichlor will have a net decline in pH, or it's going to stay very stable because, you know, the natural rise is kind of counteracting however fast you're doing it. Another thing to think about when you're managing a trichlor pool is to never put it in the skimmer. Oh my gosh, I probably just said that like six minutes ago. Don't do it. It is a very acidic chlorine. I don't really personally like the floaters either, uh, but they're better than the skimmer. And what happens is you may see discoloration on a vinyl liner or... Um, etching on steps or a plaster surface, pebble, whatever you have around where that floater hangs out. And that is not because the chlorine is bleaching this out. It's because the low pH of trichlor is lowering the LSI in that area. That's where the pigment's going. So you have a localized LSI violation. So let's get to the strategy of this. And I'm going to wrap this episode up pretty quickly. The strategy with trichlor, like I said, you need a little bit more alkalinity in this pool, but try, if you can, to keep your levels under control. Regular dilutions are necessary because if you just keep using trichlor, CYA is going to build and build and build and build. It's going to be very, very hard to avoid overstabilization. And then next thing you know, you've got a lot of other problems. You're going to have unbalanced water. You're going to have a lot more etching, or in the case of a vinyl liner, fading because of an LSI violation, maybe some wrinkling over time. We see it happen all the time. Make sure you are constantly thinking about your cyanuric acid level. Whereas in a non-stabilized pool, you don't have to really think about that. Now, it's a, it's a smaller deal if you're just periodically shocking with dichlor. But if you're shocking every other week or more, well, you're going to be accumulating quite a bit of CYA. So keep that in mind. The pool will not need much acid because this is an acidic chlorine if you're using trichlor. Dichlor, again, pretty neutral, not going to really make an impact on it. And uh, this strategy has to change. And that's an in-season strategy. It changes when the water gets colder. In the off-season, we don't ever want you using trichlor because the water temperature is so cold. Number one, the chlorine is not really going to do much anyway in cold water. But number two, you're just adding more CYA to it. So even if it could work, chlorine would be slow. But then you stabilize it or overstabilize it, it's going to be way, way slower. And the water becomes more aggressive. That leads to winter problems that we hope you can avoid. So in short, trichlor and dichlor are stabilized chlorines because they are already bound to cyanuric acid. If you use them too much, you will have an overstabilization problem. That's why they are not meant to be uh, primary chlorines. 
Trichlor is an outstanding supplemental chlorine to maintain CYA levels over time as, you know, splash out dilution occurs. Eventually CYA will get oxidized out, but it takes a long time. It's, it's fine for that. It is not something that you want to be relying on too heavily as your only chlorine. But if you are going to switch chlorines, make sure you store them safely. Do not interact them directly. And I hope this episode helps. I wish I had Jared on here. He was great. He was just the color commentary on the last time, but we had to re-record it. I'm Eric Knight with Arenda. Thank you so much for your time. And by the way, thank you for all of the listeners out here who are sharing it amongst yourselves. We are getting so much positive feedback from this. All we really wanted to do with the Rule Your Pool podcast was speak to pool operators and owners and try to make sense of all the information out there so that you could listen while you work, listen while you drive. So if you do know some more pool owners that could benefit from our message, please share this podcast with them. It means a lot to us. As I said, this is episode 20. This concludes our series on different types of chlorine and how to manage them. If you have questions, hit us up on Facebook or write them in the comments below this YouTube video. And if you're listening on the podcast, reach out to us at arendatech.com. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Signing off. Thank you for listening to Rule Your Pool, a podcast by Arenda Technologies. For more information on what we discussed in this week's episode, check the links in the description or visit www.orendatech.com. I hope you find this show valuable enough that you tap that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can also like us on Facebook and social media. And with our help, you'll be able to rule your pool without over-treating it with chemicals and wasting money. I'll see you next episode.